I want to be rich. I want to make more than just getting by and, and have, living paycheck to paycheck. Sure. Because I mean, that's what I've been doing, yeah. you know? And so I, I want to be able to go on a cool cruise or something like that, you know, and have a nice house. I want better than just that. Sure. But I don't know if that necessarily means that I'm, I'm not necessarily money driven, but I don't, know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Well, I think what you're trying to say, you're equating rich with being what I would call monetarily successful. When when people say the word rich, they usually have this picture of, you know, maybe just money floating in the air and gold rings and watches and all these super fancy materialistic things, rich, right? You know, you have to earn a pretty good living just to take care of a wife and children, what I would call a comfortable living. Or if you don't, it's a difficult ride. It's a difficult world. I think most people are thinking rich and what they're really talking about is the struggle to have just a little bit more so that they're comfortable, so that taking a vacation to go skiing with your family of five is not a financial burden. That's rich to a lot of people. I mean, that's, yeah. your, that's still rich to me. Right, right. But not getting on a plane flying to the Swiss Alps for the weekend because you're rich. Right. right. That's a whole nother level. And so I think people jump over the first and try to get to the second, and that's yeah. where they miss it. I think you can excel and exceed your expectations by grinding and working hard and doing different things and being smart with your money, mm -hmm. which is a whole nother conversation about being debt free. You mentioned that you used to be money focused and now you're not. Mm -hmm. Do you think someone who is essentially in my position or someone who's right out of college, instead of them thinking money focused, what do they need to be focused on? So let me clarify money focused real quick. Okay. I don't want people to think I'm anti money or success. When I say money focused, I mean money beyond survival, money beyond taking care of my immediate family and my needs to the tune of a comfort. That's the money that you have to have, right? right. I'm talking about the money that you don't have to have. Like baller status. Baller status. That's what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Like jets and the yachts and the watches and the, I'm not into that. Never right. have, never have been really like from afar. Oh, that's cool. But so when I say I'm not money focused, I'm focused on earning a living, mm -hmm. but I'm not focused on that big thing, that ethereal thing out there that, you know, most people attain or think they will attain and it's going to bring them wholeness. I don't believe that that's what brings you wholeness anymore. Mm -hmm. I used to think that. I don't anymore. It's my opinion. So now to me, it's the legacy that I leave behind. It's how do I you know, raise my children to be good citizens of the world? How do I bring more people along so that they can be afforded the opportunities? I'm not like buying people into success. I'm not saying, you know, come along beside me and I'm going to make you rich. It's not about being rich. It's about growing as a human being, leaving a legacy yourself and me having a part of your legacy and so on and so on and so on. So money driven to me means beyond taking care of my immediate needs and my family and, and mm -hmm. those things that are have tos. Cool? Cool. I kind of had a light bulb moment. It seems like for both scenarios, in order to hit your goal of being wealthy, you have to live below your means. So if you're making <laughs> X amount, you need to live off Y amount. Yeah. So not only should you be able to do that individually, but your businesses should operate that way too. Gotcha. Therein lies the budget. Right. Therein lies the planning and the execution of the plan. Of course, you have to operate as a business or live as an individual below, slightly below, or as aggressively below as you want to catapult your your vision or your you know your ideal of wealth creation, whatever that looks like. For you. So if you want the car that has the heated seats, you do it 50 bucks at a time. So you, you come up with a plan, you come up with a budget, you work your income to your budget, and then if there's deficit, you have to go earn more money. Picking up cans or delivering pizza. Dave likes to throw that one out a lot. Go deliver pizzas on the weekends, you know. The problem is that most people don't want to do the extra work. They just want to do the work they're at. It can be mentally depressing to try to attack it and you look at it and it seems insurmountable. Yeah. I mean, you look at it and you go, I have $150,000 in student loans. How am I ever going to get out of that? 50 bucks at a time and working your ass off. I mean, first, I know that step one, finish paying off my car so I'm debt free. Yep. And then it's just put back, put back. And so if it's an ex example, like I wanted to have like a, a duplex or a commercial building or something like that, you have to have money for a down payment. So sure. in order to get into that level, you have to either, how do you do that? So from a practical standpoint, if you're, if you're out there and you're making 35, 45, 55,000 a year, some of those goals are lofty and, and they, they seem like, well, how do I ever do that? And a lot of people will try to sell you an ebook and tell you, well, you can do it with other people's money or zero down and all this kind of stuff. And, and those are instances. It does happen. 
The thing to do is just to remember that the amount of hustle that you put into anything, and that that word is being thrown around ridiculously this year and last year. Um, it's just hard work. It's just work. Just get up and do something. Stay up later and do something. Just do a little extra. If you're going to work eight to five, punching the clock, doing your thing, and you're not doing anything else in the evenings, anything else on the weekends to earn any money towards one of these lofty goals, it's never going to happen. It's just not. You have to cultivate extra activities that create extra money in order to take the extra money, combine it with what you do have left over, and go from that. Listen, even if you if you made forty five thousand dollars a year and you lived on you single and you lived on fifteen grand, which sounds ridiculous. That's eleven hundred, twelve hundred a month, right? It sounds ridiculous. If you had seven roommates, it might be plausible, but even with thirty grand at the end of the year, it's going to be hard to do anything lofty, right? Most people aren't disciplined enough to live on 15 grand a year so they have the chance to take the 30 and do something with it, okay? So what you got to do is you got to live on 15, take the 30, go make another 15, deliver them pizzas for 12 months. Now you got 45, you got 50% more than you would have had. Now you're getting to the realm to where you might actually be able to do something. In three years, you got $135,000 sitting in the bank. Well, I don't know if I can do that. Live on, live on 15 grand for three years, put back 30, make an extra 15 delivering pieces for three freaking years. That's nothing. And you got 135,000 cash at the end of three years. That sounds extremely aggressive to me. If somebody out there wants to do it, hit me up three years from now. Let me know that you cashed in 135 grand and bought a duplex rental property. Try it. Go for it. I think it's possible to do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. What if you're making 75 grand a year? Live on 25, save 50. Don't do the second job. You've got 150 grand in three years. The problem is most people don't want to wait three years. It seems like patience is the biggest obstacle to overcome in all of this. It's a, it's a hurdle. It's definitely a hurdle. I don't think it's an obstacle as much as it's not. Like an obstacle to me is something you can or can't get over based on your based on your experience, mm -hmm. based on your talent, right? So a hurdle, yeah, something you can go over, go around, go under. Sure, work out the details. But yeah, it's a sacrifice, man. If I'm paying less tax or getting refunds, I'm in a bad spot. You, you know, financially speaking, it's a bad. That's a bad place to be. Like you don't want to be there. You want to keep your money and give the government just what's due. So adjust your withholdings to where you're either slightly owing as close to zero as possible. Always be bouncing around. If you have a job where it doesn't ebb and flow and it's a constant and you've been there five years or ten years or whatever, and you're getting a refund every year, you need to look at that because literally you just gave the IRS a no interest loan of your money and they gave it right back to you and that's bullshit but that's how it works right that's, the point. that's stupid why would you do that uh not stupid that's ignorant it's ignorance you don't know any better so you just do it you're like look at my tax refund no dave ramsey talks about this all the time he's beating that drum right now to death he needs mm -hmm. to put a new skin on it because everybody's frothing at the mouth over their huge tax return or their tax return in general and like as soon as i get my tax return i'm gonna buy a new couch no that's your money you just gave it to them for a year with no interest. They didn't give you anything for it. Most people, when they get laid off, yeah, sure, they're probably looking at the job market every single day, but it's sitting behind a desk every single day yeah. that choked the life out of me. And you know why they're doing it? Because they're afraid to take this next step. No, because oh. they have a house payment and a car payment oh, yeah, right. and a credit card payment, and they're still paying off Christmas, and it's June. Right. Right? That's why. That's why they can't get free from that cycle and they're got laid off and they're looking for the next one is because they're they're freaking trapped by their own decisions. And so we've got to change fundamentally how we spend money and allocate money towards our lives and live really within our means and, and go from there. But on the investing side, you know, like I said, anything inside of three years is short term. If you're thinking that you're going to go out and do something in real estate in three to six months, you might do something, but it won't be significant enough to, to change the trajectory of what you're on right now. To me, it'd be that insignificant, you know. Now, if you're going to do it and your, your reciprocated margin coming back to you is a couple of grand, and that's game changing for, you know, your family or your family tree or whatever you got going on, then it's obviously worth it. You know, um, if you're a high income earner and you're looking just to not really diversify, but just to have a growing number of assets beyond 401k and that kind of stuff, then real estate is a great place to go. I was really good at living within my means when I was coming up. When I was picking up cans, I was living within my means. Not until I got a little bit of success did I really start to make stupid decisions buying new cars, living in a home that was maybe a little too expensive for what I should have been doing at the time. You know, but it took me a few years to accumulate that stuff and then face some really hard, difficult times when we talked about the market shifting in 07, 08, 09, and 10, all that that happened. Man, you had to look in the mirror and be like, well, now I'm wired differently. I didn't give a shit what everybody thought about me having to give up the new ride or move out of that house, right? So I didn't care. 
too many people care and then they can't get out. I didn't care. So I was like, whatever, sell it all, I'll start over. Doesn't bother me a lick. It's the people that do care, they can't get out from under it and trapped and then they just go from one cycle to the next cycle to the next cycle. Right? We talked about this early, early on. If you're making $45,000 a year and you want to buy some rental property or have real estate investment, it's difficult. And it's difficult not only to get started, but to really have a return that's worth your time. And when I say that, it's like, well, if 2000 bucks is going to change what's happening inside your family dynamic with your budget, well, I can show you a lot of different ways to make two grand that doesn't right. involve buying a piece of real estate and flipping it. Right. You could deliver pizzas. You could get a part-time job. You could, you know, get a career change. So there's there's other ways to make that limited amount of upside without doing real estate. So I guess it's, you had to like sum it up in three points. It's don't reinvent the wheel. Find the most value. And three, don't be stupid. <laughs> Well, I mean, don't be stupid applies to just about everything in life. You could wrap it up and say number three, it should be lower your expectations. Mm. Yeah. Just lower your expectations. When you set that bar too high by following some of these guys on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever, that are talking about what they're talking about, and you get sucked into the vortex of, oh man, it's going to be quick cash, I'm going to make it. Just set your expectations really low. And then you're not disappointed and just go back to the old wisdom of if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Everything that is a success is work, bottom line. Outside of winning the lottery or some distant relative passing away and leaving you a ton of money, everything is work. So there's no quick get rich quick thing in the real estate game. And so I just want to tell people to lower their expectations. That would probably be a really good one to adhere to.